Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be really interesting. Yesterday we saw the markets were soaring high because of the news of the Republicans scanning up in the uh, US um, elections. The Trump's presidency is a great thing in the US market and it reflects on the Indian market as well. So there's a lot of uh, contradictory statements which say that uh, Trump is definitely going up curb 60% uh, of uh, China's business and what it impacts to us and how are we going to be represented in that is a matter of fact here. And um, Trump in his announcement, uh, the first thing that he told was a new star was born where he was referring to Elon as his uh, favorite star. And then the next thing what he told was that uh, the borders are going to be sealed and uh, it means that uh, no one can enter the US, the Mexico borders are also going to be sealed. And he also mentioned that it's going to be only through the legal means. So the entry is going to be the country through the legal means and there are over uh, a dozen of Indian Senates now there representing in the US. With all these favoring of the Indian markets, the IT industry is definitely going to boom. All of us know that. So we saw a shoot up yesterday in the uh, Nifty IT. All the uh, scripts were in uh, higher trends and it was all trading in 5% of upper circuit almost. And with persistent uh, topping up the score and uh, KPIT, Infosys, TCS, all of them were in a higher swing. And uh, today the market is now showing up a correction again. So this leaves us to a confused state like what exactly is happening. So this is because of your uh, Fed policies and volatility. That is which is keeping the market a little bit uh, hesitant and people are like still uh, trying to book profits of yesterday's rally. And uh, the things that you need to understand on uh, Trump's uh, recent uh, victorship on the elections is uh, these five crucial points I would say. So the um, uh, the presidency is definitely going to be for the red sweep, which is, means the uh, Republicans are going to take the charge of uh, the uh, US elections and that's going to stir a big uh, risk on the uh, global rally. There's going to be uh, definitely a medium term volatility which is happening so because of the inflation. So a buy in the dip strategy is always advised here. So uh, you have to definitely go whenever you see a correction or a dip in the market, always go for it. And um, the uh, fiscal policies and the higher yields that which we are planning to see again ahead. So the Trump administration is definitely expected to uh, extend significant fiscal policies because uh, including the 2017 tax cuts. So with the focus was mainly on infrastructure, technology and defense. So these three sectors are definitely going to boom and uh, this could increase the US deficit and drive up bond yields. So um, that's going to be definitely happening into this because of this, there's going to be a higher uh, market volatility which is expected. And these three sectors are definitely going to boom again. Then uh, the trade policies and the currency risks that we are going to face because uh, there's, as there is going to be a cut on the Chinese and Mexican imports, this will uh, strengthen the US dollar. And um, because uh, despite uh, Trump has got a preference for a weaker dollar, because of this the cut in China and Mexico, that's going to increase the volatility, especially in the Asian markets like India, because uh, the Chinese Yuan weakness will automatically trigger up your uh, Indian dollar uh, weakness as well. So that's going to be impacted and uh, this is going to have a big impact on the Indian markets. So the Indian currency and bond markets may experience early shocks because of this initial rally thing. And uh, there will be a depreciation on the rupee, definitely that's expected, following by your uh, um, China Yuan. The RBI may prioritize uh, financial stability over inflation control. So they may plan up for something that and uh, that may be rate cut strategies which could be uh, um, implemented and that could uh, in fact uh, make your yield curve. The planning, the yield will be making maybe instead of sharpening it, it may become flatter. And uh, the ideal method will be in uh, going with your uh, long term growth and inflation. Uh, with uh, plan in your volatility and uh, global investment. So that will definitely change because uh, there are inch, um, the higher rates and the unpredictable uh, growth patterns in the market that we're going to experience. So that's definitely going to have uh, a lot of headwinds which is going to be like uh, making up the market a little bit uh, um, volatile. And uh, we have to definitely go with the buy in dip uh, policy in um, co coherence with whatever the uh, new government is going to propose. And these would be the main five crucial points on this. And in this video, we're going to see the main things that is going to uh, be impacted or that's going to be like really uh, uh, thriving because of these uh, new policy changes and stuff. So there are uh, various uh, small cap companies that could get impacted in this. So in this video, we'll see a quick uh, review of uh, three small cap companies. So the first company is a significant player in your uh, VSAT uh, industry. That's a small aperture terminal. That's a communication uh, device. So they provide satellite communication across uh, various industries, including maritime, retail, 
oil and gas, banking, renewable energy. So these provide um, a remote connectivity in areas where there is a lack of uh, terrestrial communication infrastructure. So this company is uh, one of the pioneers in that. So they provide uh, VSAT connectivity services. They offer end-to-end -end satellite communication. So this is more like our Starlink in the US. So uh, something like that. So with a strong focus on the VSAT services. So they provide, uh, in fact, broadband services in remote regions, including uh, support for industries that op operate offshore. Because uh, if you go to your uh, oil rigs or for companies that are uh, inside the oceans where we've got a limited connectivity, these companies provide satellite, internet, broadband kind of services. And they are also uh, very famous or used in maritime communications. So they are one of the few companies which provide satellite based communication to ships and offshore installations. They cater to the growing demand of all these reliable communications across the seas. So that's one of their uh, crucial business model and uh, their next service would be in your IoT and MTM communications. So they have expanded recently into your Internet of Things and machine to machine services as well. And they are aligning with all the broader trends towards increasing connectivity across uh, all these uh, industrial application kind of places or in oil rigs or across the seas. And uh, the next service that they are into is definitely going to be in the latest technologies which is into managing services. So they are providing a fully managed communication services for businesses. So they are into uh, providing managed services including network management, data security and uh, in fact into uh, on-site technical support. So they have extended their support that way too. So I think by now you would have got the idea about the company. So the company is uh, none other than Nelco. So Nelco is uh, a strong position in, uh, in the VSAT market industry and uh, they are estimated to have uh, about 20 to 25% of the market share inside your uh, VSAT market. And they face competition from uh, the biggest players in the uh, company as well as in local providers. The global players are the main uh, threat to them. And they are providing uh, comprehensive services into uh, corporates as well as to governments in the, in the uh, segment of these uh, maritime as well as in remote area services. So coming to the financials of this company, if you see the earnings and the profitability of the company, so the company has seen a steady increase in revenue over the recent years due to the growth in your uh, satellite and IoT solutions demand in the market. And their profit earnings and EPS, if you happen to consider them, the profit earnings tend to be impacted high because of the operating cost in the uh, satellite communication industry. The EPS have also fluctuated in the recent years because due to the cost associated with uh, the expanding infrastructure or in the uh, navigating regulatory changes, whatever the new law the government proposes because of that. And uh, the company's dividend yield is like generally very less because uh, they try to reinvest its earnings into the company's growth or into expansion. So its infrastructure services are something which they are trying to focus on. So they are very poor in giving up dividends. But that is like very less attractive when compared to the company's uh, growth or in uh, um, if you are someone who are looking for like greater results and greater growth in the company, then this is definitely a company to uh, look into. And uh, if you happen to consider how the Trump government is going to be impacting this particular business or this particular company's thing. So if you happen to see the uh, Trump government's impact on this particular company, uh, if you happen to see there is going to be an um, direct impact on this company and it could influence Nelco. So the first point would be in your uh, global trade and uh, satellite industry. So if there is an increased global trade, the Nelco could face uh, challenging up in uh, sourcing satellite technology from the US and uh, the US based suppliers may not try to give them that may lead to automatically increase their uh, potential cost of their uh, setups. So that is definitely going to be happening because of this government change. The Indo-US relationship, that's the main thing to look into because under the Trump government, the US-India relationship were really positive. So that could benefit the Indian tech companies in the long run. In fact, this company was on a great run up yesterday. They were almost 7% up. So if there are any future trade policy increase, then that could become a barrier. Otherwise, this company is definitely going to be like going up great places. Then the next thing would be your regulatory changes. So if the government is like planning up into new regulatory changes towards the environment in, in terms of companies which are into tech and telecommunication, then this company may be impacted due to that. And um, this could be automatically impacting of their earnings as well. If you happen to see the company's earning chart, you could see the revenue of the company is over 300 crores and the net profit is 25 crores out of that. Their operating profit margin is roughly 15% and their net profit margin is like 8%. And you could see the EPS of the share is like uh, rupee 5 and they are yielding up a dividend of just 1 rupee. And their uh, PE ratio is like 20 which is a fair value. And their debt to equity ratio is again 0.3 and their ROE is like 12%.
So um, if you are uh, hearing of this word P and PB for the first time, then uh, PE ratio is nothing but the uh, uh, the ratio of this the share particularly when it is compared with the uh, earnings per share. So that's the uh, value that people are ready to buy this share. So the greater the value, it's good for the company. So the PE ratio has to be good, but an ideal value would be in like 30s range and anything over that, which means the share is like overpriced and the people are like uh, just buying it uh, with the FOMO. So you should try avoiding things like that. The PB ratio is nothing but your company's stock price when compared with your uh, book value per share. So that is the book value which the company has given up in their balance sheet. So a lower PB ratio is like always preferred. So whenever the stock is undervalued, then you try to buy them and the value reaches up to a higher price, you can automatically book the profits on them. So the company is in like greater positions in this uh, current scenario with a high or with a nice PE values and PB values in this. So the next company that would be impacting because of this uh, new thing would be your uh, company which is uh, primarily into the designing and manufacturing also into the export of diamond and gold jewelry. So because of its global reach and spe especially in the US market this company uh, leverages the advance, uh, advantage of uh, manufacturing facilities and focus on uh, new product innovations and to cater up international clients including large retail chains and online jewelry retailers. And this company is primarily uh, operating in the export market with its significant uh, portion of revenue coming from the US. So where the supplies for diamond studded gold and platinum jewelry to major suppliers. You could even see Mr. Donald Trump wearing up or flaunting up his lot of uh, diamond jewelries uh, and stuff in every meetings and press conferences. So this company is primarily into making up those kind of uh, um, highly lucrative and really um, rich um, gold and platinum jewelries. And this company is, has invested a state of the art a manufacturing facility which is like um, bringing up in um, bulk production and focusing on the new modern jewelry trends. And they make even customized jewelry as well. And besides that, they are uh, one of the leaders in uh, lab grown diamonds. So this company has uh, expanded its new businesses into the um, because the sector was like really increasing up and uh, users uh, um, requirement for the diamond business increased up more. So this made the company to cater its growth demands to the sustainable jewelry, especially in the US. These lab grown diamonds are like really uh, crazy there and stuff. And uh, besides that, they have been tied up with e-commerce and online retailers where there is a rise of online shopping. So this company has uh, gained a traction and uh, it has made up uh, a collaboration with all these prominent online jewelry platforms, thereby enhancing their distribution and reaching in the US and other markets. And uh, if you know the uh, name of this company, just pause this video and leave the name of the company in the comments. And um, if you have uh, guessed by now, the name of the company is Goldium International. So this company holds a niche position in your uh, global jewelry market, especially in the diamond studded uh, industry, because uh, this has got a growing market in the US and there is a huge demand for all the uh, uh, buyers there. And there has been a strong partnership which has been made with online lit platforms and a lot of retailers. And uh, if you happen to see the uh, revenue of this company, this company has shown up steady growth in revenue, supporting its uh, expanding presence in the US and increasing up of uh, lab grown diamonds. And if you happen to see the profit earnings and EPS, this company has got a stable uh, profit margin, adding with uh, a lot of uh, manufacturing and high value nature of its jewelry products. So there's a profit margin is like really huge. And uh, you could see that the company's EPS is also like seen a positive growth. So that makes it um, show how much of a robust demand is there in the export market, especially in the US. And uh, dividends, this company has definitely has got a history of giving uh, regular dividends. So that is something which could attract people who are into uh, uh, looking out for profitability or for expecting up returns in the market. So the dividend yield of this company is like uh, really attractive for all those people who are income focused besides uh, growth factor. And if you happen to see the uh, financial chart of this, the company has got a revenue of 500 crores out of which there are 70 crores of uh, profit margin. And uh, the net profit is 70 crores, the profit margin is like 20%. And uh, the EPS is like 15.5 and uh, the PE ratio is like 12 and the PB ratio is like 1.8. So this is a very good uh, financial statement for a company. And uh, if you happen to see that uh, this company, how it could be impacted because of this uh, Trump administration. And uh, given the company's uh, market conditions and how much it is like uh, favored in the US market, uh, and how much the Indian US relationship could be beneficial. So this makes up uh, the exporters uh, like gold to continue. If this similar policies are going to be like in uh, existence, then this is going to be a very great thing happening for the company. 
and uh, the Trump in, uh, administration has always uh, imposed up tariffs on various imports. And if there are any uh, protection policies towards the Goldium's cost structure, then the pricing of this in the US market is definitely going to help up increase up their customer base, thereby increasing up their uh, sales and stuff. And um, the economic stability of the country again believes in that. So in under Trump's administration, the uh, policies or things which are uh, favored could be into economic growth and consumer spending. So which makes the impact on luxury spending markets like jewelry is definitely going to be positive under his administration. So these are some of the key points um, which could be like beneficial of this. And given all the PE ratio, a favorable value with the PB ratio and the company giving up a nice uh, uh, dividends and a good ROU value. This is one of the definitely a company to keep in your uh, uh, tracking list. So the next company that is going to be favored because of this is uh, going to be a company which is into uh, providing visa and uh, outsourcing services. As I told in the early part of the video where uh, Trump on his first announcement he told that he's going to curb up all the uh, doors to the country so all the exit doors entry doors is going to be blocked and only the legal entry is going to be possible this company plays a key role there because they are including visa services to us canada europe austria australia asia and africa and they are providing e-governance as well as into citizenship and uh, this company collaborates with the government to uh, streamline administrative process making it easy for the citizens and stuff and the main key business of this country is into visa and passport outsourcing their prime customers or companies like TCS, Infosys, Wipro, all these IT companies who have got uh, back there in their Silicon Valley and uh, they are uh, like completely outsourcing them their services to this specific company and the core business lies in providing outsourced visa and passport uh, processing services. So the H1Bs, whatever uh, the uh, candidates are like using up, this company is the one who is liaising with the governments and getting those approved. The company helps in uh, documentation, verification and submissions of visa applications, thereby making the easy for workload for the consulates as well as the embassy, as well as the companies, as well as the individuals. So it's in liaison with all of these people and making their job easier. And um, besides the visa processing services, they are also into uh, uh, creating up your e-governance as well as uh, providing up digital solutions to the citizens as well as to the government as well as uh, citizens interaction. So it makes up a platform between the governments and citizens. So this company includes the handling public records, online citizenship registrations, your birth and marriage certificates, land records, all of these are uh, maintained by their uh, another company, which is their sister concern. So this e-services provides up government registration services and uh, they take care of this. Besides that, they also provide a uh, biometric services. And uh, if you happen to see them that, uh, they provide biometric data collections, which is very crucial for countries where there is a strict implementation on immigration and security protocols. And uh, besides that, they also provide attestation and apostille services. So they provide up attestation towards your uh, birth certificate validation and your uh, educational diplomas. When the papers go for stamping, all those are taken care by this company. And um, by now you could have got the idea about the company. The company is none other than BLS International. They have the sister concern which is BLS e-services. BLS e-services was again rocketing yesterday after the Trump and victory announcement. And this company's market share is a, is a great thing in the Indian visa outsourcing industry because they are competing up with major players who is BFS Global. Um, this company is again uh, one of the key uh, market players because uh, they are uh, in tie up with all these uh, big IT corporate companies and stuff. And if you see the revenue of this company, this company has seen consistent revenue growth thereby expanding its partnership with government as well as uh, e-governance services. And the company's uh, profit margin has been really stable because of their high service fees that they're charging up and uh, their uh, operation model is like, really simple. Their EPS, EPS has always shown up uh, positive growth because it's a good indicator. That's a good indicator normally when we look out for companies uh, for long term sustenance. So, and uh, if the EPS of the share is good, we normally go with con companies like that. So, the company is giving out a moderate dividend too. They are like uh, not very poor as like Nelco and not very lucrative like Goldium. So, they are like giving up an average dividend. And uh, the earning dividend yield may be like uh, very less because uh, the company reinvents uh, its earnings uh, towards uh, expanding its new businesses or in uh, setting up new digital offerings. And you could see here in this financial sheet, the company has got a revenue of 800 crores out of which the net profit is like 120 crores. The profit margin is 15%, uh, the EPS is 12 rupees. The dividend is like 3.5 rupees here. The 
PV, PE ratio is like 25, which is really good. The PB value is like 2.5. The things that could be considered on this stock uh, with the Trump administration would be in your uh, immigration and visa policies. So the Trump administration is definitely going to make everything legal and there's not going to be like any uh, illegal entry into the nation. So that is going to definitely increase your demand for documentation, background verification, visa processing and all of these. So if that are all going to happen, then this company is definitely going to skyrocket. And uh, the US-India relationship, because of the positive diplomatic tie-up tie between India and the US, uh, the Trump administration is going to encourage country companies like this to uh, process up visas and uh, to apply for their H-1Bs, whoever is like traveling to the US from for their business and official work purposes. So this would be uh, my take on the small cap companies that could benefit from the uh, new uh, Trump government. And uh, if you know of any other companies, do leave them in the comments below. So these would be some of the gem of a companies uh, that I prefer to uh, track into your uh, small cap in sector. And um, this is not a stock recommendation by any means. So this is just a small comparison by me, which I have made up uh, to find out which companies could get benefited because of this new Trump administration. And if you know of any other companies, do leave them in the comments below. I would love to read what you guys come up with. And if you like this video, do share it up with your friends and uh, smack that like button as well. And uh, I'll see you up in the next video. Thanks for watching.